Hello everyone and welcome to days 25 and 26 of our RV10 build. On these days we continued work on the horizontal stabilizer. Our tasks began with clecoing the nose ribs and inside ribs to the front spar of the horizontal stabilizer. And rather than trying to work with um, everything laying on its, the horizontal stabilizer and all the ribs there laying on its side flat on that tabletop, um, I tried to find a way where we could perhaps suspend everything from the spar itself. And so we found two spare pieces of two by four that we had that happened to be just long enough to clamp them to the edge of the table there and to then suspend the spar uh, between the two wood blocks. So this way, instead of having uh, everything laying on its side and those ribs, I think you can see there in the video, they're slightly curved. Um, for that leading edge there of the horizontal stabilizer, instead of having everything laying there on its side and maybe rolling around, this was a nice sturdy flat surface to work with having that spar stretched on those flat, um, the flat two by fours there. So it just, I, it seemed to us to be um, much more convenient and easy this way, just better access to the spar instead of just laying it on its side. The other nice thing by doing it this way is that it left us with all of that space there on our tabletop to be free for the manual and our tools and the Clecos and whatnot to be able to be spread out. If we were having to lay it down on its side there on the table, that would have required us to clear off probably about half of the workable space there on on, uh, on our workbench. So this that was just another advantage is not losing all of that uh, workspace while still getting everything done and having everything around and having great access to the horizontal stabilizer. One thing is we did move the blocks around a little bit while we were working. And so if you are thinking of maybe doing this, keep an eye out for where the holes are in the spar web where you're gonna be attaching the ribs so that then when you place the blocks the first time, you can space them out just right so that you won't be um, interfering with any of the spots where you're gonna be uh, installing any of the ribs and having to move stuff around back and forth. So now we're on to the next day and um, one of the tools that you're going to need with this uh, kit with doing the RV10 build is you're going to need the 12 inch drill bits to reach into some of the little tight spots or hard to reach places where you can't just get in there with a drill. And we have that obviously, but one of the things that we've added on is the six inch number 30 and number 40 drill bits. And it's just a nice little kind of in between for using on certain spots where sometimes with the 12 inch, I feel um, you, you do need it in certain places, but other times when you just need it to be a little longer than normal, you kind of feel like Dr. Frankenstein there with one of these big long uh, drills and it's a little bit more awkward, I find, trying to line everything up just right. Uh, so we decided to try and get the, the six inch ones and we've used them a couple different times and here this was one of them. We used both the 12 inch and the six inch today, but the six inch sometimes just um, seems to be a little bit easier to use and um, a little easier just to kind of like line up. A little, it feels just a little bit less awkward to me, just personal opinion. So that's something that we've, we've since added on um, since we first bought our original toolkit. One of the other things we had to do today was build the cradle for the horizontal stabilizer. And so in the book, it goes over how you could trace one of the ribs on a piece of plywood and then cut it out and have a rigid cradle to hold the horizontal stabilizer. And originally we thought we were gonna do that, but Tyler remembered watching a uh, Jason Ellis video that we saw where he had made it more of kind of a flexible design I'll find the link and put it below in the description But after watching that we talked about it and said hmm Maybe it would be kind of nice to have it where it's a little bit uh, more flexible so that we can move and pivot the uh, the stabilizer around and so here we are using some spare two by fours and I happen to have these two spare do uh, old dog leashes that I never use and cut those down to make a 
little suspended area there with the the dog leash to hold up the um, the horizontal stabilizer. Now again, we used two by four. Actually, these were spare pieces from the crate that <laughs> the the emp kit came in. And you might have seen earlier, Tyler was actually pulling nails out. So uh, another good use for the crate. Thank you, Vans. The two by four worked well for making this, but after getting further along, what we found was that the four inches was a little too wide to, and it started to interfere a little bit with the Clecos. So what I mean is being able to kind of nudge the horizontal stabilizer back and forth, once you put all those Clecos in to connect the spar um, and all the ribs, the, that four inches takes up a lot of space there along the edge of the skin. And so if I were to do it again, I would probably want to go with a skinnier uh, piece of wood, like maybe um, a two by two, something where it just would cut down the uh, surface area that it's blocking. And the other thing is here, I put it together with nails. If you decide to do something like this, I highly recommend screws, long wood screws, just to make sure that it helps hold it together. Um, I did end up later on throughout the build having to kind of hammer the parts back together again. Again, this was nothing permanent. This was just to help hold this up while we were working on it, but it was a little bit annoying to go and have to keep hammering the nails back in to just make sure that it stayed nice and secure. But through, as you'll see later on, once we actually get this all put together in here, uh, we really did like having that little bit of flexibility. Now, that being said, I can really see where having a rigid cradle would be very useful, especially to somebody working on their own, to have it where the rigid cradle would hold it fixed and keep it from moving. So when you're going to drill or rivet or whatnot, it's like having an extra pair of hands because you clamp the you clamp the cradle down to the table, and so if you had a rigid cradle, it's a, it's basically an extra set of hands that are actually holding it all together for you. So this isn't saying like don't do it the way it says in the book. It's just this was an alternative way that we'd seen to do it. We did actually enjoy it. This is how we happened to put ours together with some parts that we had there at the house. It worked out nicely for us, but I, I do see where there would be advantages to having a, a rigid cradle that would actually sit there and hold it steady for you. Something to perhaps keep in mind if you're doing this on your own versus doing it with um, a significant other or a family member or whatnot. And this was another nice day to have two people because as you can see the different work we were able to get done, there's plenty with this horizontal stabilizer and especially with the two sides, the left and the right side to be working on to divvy up the work. You can see here Tyler's going and deburring all of the edges for one of the skins while I'm in the back there um, removing part of the vinyl so that's protecting the skin so that we get access to all of the holes that we're about to be drilling and dimpling and whatnot. Um, and even when we were putting the ribs on to be able to have, you know, one person can click on one side, one can click on the other side. It was a great, this is a great day with these tasks that were involved. Um, to, to have two people there working on it. And again, it just helps. It's nice to see that it you know cuts down on the amount of time that we would have spent if it was just one of us. Another thing, I'm not sure if we've used it. I think we've used them in other videos, um, but something random that's been helpful is we have a little rack of weights in our garage there and having those to help set down, like you might've seen just now, uh, Tyler has one of them sitting on one of the skins just so that it helps hold it down on the table while he's um, going and deburring the edges. So instead of trying to clamp it and then possibly damaging anything with the skin, these uh, weights that we have, they're uh, soft, like rubber on the edges. Like, so it's, it's, it's something soft and padded wrapped around the weights on each end of each dumbbell. And so it's not doing any scratching or whatnot. It's just a little bit of weight to help kind of hold it in place. So I don't know how much we've used them in the previous videos. I just don't remember, but I do know that we have used these quite a few different times when you just need to prop something up, hold it down, just an extra set of, again, like an extra set of hands just to kind of help gently but firmly hold something in place, not do any damage, but make sure that it is kind of not gonna go anywhere, um, but still have the ability if you wanna be able to move it. 
one of those nice little things to have in the garage and have it available for us. And that about wraps it up for today. So again, we've got the, the spar out there, got all of the ribs, Clecoed and match drilled, and got the two skins out, peeled off the vinyl, and started deburring all the edges. And so in the next video, you will see where we are putting the skins into the cradles that we've just built and starting to put everything together. On a completely unrelated note, I have recently passed 500 subscribers here on the channel, so thank you everyone. I'm really flattered. I'm glad that you all are enjoying the videos. And I am planning a giveaway that I'm going to be doing. I don't know exactly how it's going to work out just yet. Still figuring out the details, but I will have some more information about that coming up. So keep your eyes peeled. And I hope everyone stays safe and healthy out there. Take care of yourselves. Perfect opportunity to work on your plane. Actually, we happened to talk to Vans the other day calling about a question that we had, and it turns out, I think they said they've had more orders for kits this week than they've had the past several weeks. So I thought that was kind of amusing. It's a perfect time to stay inside and work on your plane. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And feel free to leave me a message down below or you can reach out privately on plainlady.com.